take off that top bit of 21 to 47 long. Quick remove wings. The Zing was introduced at Oshkosh in 1996 at the peak of the ultralight era. The Zing is designed to fly behind a 30 to 45 horsepower engine. The airplane gets off the ground in about 75 feet, lifting off at about 25 miles per hour. With a 32 horsepower Kawasaki engine climb out as 900 feet per minute, at 45 miles per hour. Cruise comes in at around 60 to 65 miles per hour depending on engine and prop combination. The original designer, Scott Land, reports that he got the best performance, with the 35 horsepower Kawasaki liquid-cooled engine. He was swinging an Ivo prop with a 2.8 to 1 reduction drive. Top speed was 75 miles per hour at 6,650 revolutions per minute. His cruise was 60 to 65 miles per hour at 5,800 revolutions per minute. The Zing was designed as a sleek ultralight parasol to give the competition a run for their money. With the sleek custom cowling, one-piece landing gear, and somewhat large and unique vertical stabilizer, it stands out from the crowd as a show-stopper and true winner. Similar to its older brother, the Cloudster, it was designed to fly on low power for those who enjoy low and slow morning flying at minimum cost. The profile fuselage and narrow cowling provide a clean aerodynamic appeal. The major components of the plane are all wood with various aluminum fittings, landing gear, and aluminum struts. The plane is available as either plans only, full kit or as subcomponent kits. The airplane's construction is very similar to that of a wood model aircraft and can be built by anyone using standard hand tools. In an area as small as a one-car garage. The Zing will take 300 to 450 hours to complete depending on skills, tooling, and work habit. A fast and experienced builder could do it in 300 hours. A typical breakdown is 60 hours on the fuselage. 10 hours on the landing gear and rigging. 100 hours on the wings. 40 hours on the tail feathers. 20 hours on engine installation and break-in. And 70 hours on covering and painting. Top bit of 21 to, to 47 long. Quick remove wings. Okay, this is uh, Jeff Erickson here, the owner of Simplex Airplanes. Uh, I'm here with uh, Chris Jacobs, and uh, there's Chris over here. And uh, we're showing off the uh, Zing that he's been building. Um, he's building this. Uh, basically as the new factory demo plane and uh, so anyway we'll just do a little walk around apologize for some of the lighting here we're in a basement but uh, this is Chris's little workshop and it uh, works perfect for him so uh, first we can show off we'll just do a broad view then walk and look at some of the uh, individual items so Chris obviously has pretty well finished the fuselage he's got most of the controls hooked up um, including the you know you can clearly see the stick the rudder pedals um, you know, we don't have the wings mounted on the airplane yet, though the wings are completed, and we'll look at those in a second. Um, let's see, we have the bent gear slab. This is uh, the one that's made out of 2024 aluminum, um, four inch wide. It's tapered down to two inches at the bottom. And uh, yeah, so we can kind of get a little lower here. See that? So the, the paint on the edge is there, so we were just using that when we were locating the flanges. So uh, anyway, let's walk around a little bit. And Chris just recently completed um, the wing strut connections here. Done like Randy. Yeah, done like, I guess he's like another builder Randy up in, was it Randy in Vermont? Is that where he's at? Yeah, yeah, somewhere up in New York or something. Uh, zoom in there a little bit. All right. And uh, Chris elected to do the, just a standard wood turtle deck. We do have a, um, fiberglass mold to do a turtle deck. I'm not sure if we're going to end up actually using that mold ever um, just because it's so easy just to simply build uh, a simple wood turtle deck like this. This weighs nothing. I really 
I'm, I'm tempted to put it on a scale to show you how light he built that. Um, here are the uh, tail feathers here. I believe they're done. Are they done, Chris? Yeah, we're done. They're, yeah, so did an excellent job. Um, pretty much everything is per the plans. Uh, there's an exception here. Chris made some additions here, which I think are going to be really beneficial. Uh, I think this is a, a Minimax strategy. Am I correct, Chris? Yeah. So he's adding on, um, what would you call these? What, do you have a, there's uh, a name for these? Wing gap. Yeah, so they don't look like much here, but if you can picture when the fabric is actually rolled over this, this will be a, a pretty well sharped curved edge. And so the air can easily flow instead of going from a flat edge to a flat edge. So it'll just make it a little, uh, little more aerodynamic. And one thing that's important here that some people don't notice in the plans, it's in the plans, but it's not super clear, is that the Zing has these half inch by, I think it's .035, yes. uh, 6061 uh, tubes for, for struts. It has them on the top, which is usually super visible, but it also shows them on the bottom which uh, I've seen a couple people miss that and uh, though that it would you know probably get away with it you really shouldn't so make sure when you're building your Zing that you are building it with four struts on the tail um, let's see things are a little squeaky yet because nothing's been uh, been lubed up it doesn't need to be because it hasn't been sealed yet with varnish so we don't want any kind of lube around until it's all varnished up so you know, so I hear a little bit of squeaking but but he really did an excellent job here, and uh, let's see, well you can see the tail spring there, we haven't mounted the tail wheel yet, I still need to bring that over. Um, he did make another deviation, which I think is something we probably should make a note of in the plans, because it really is a good deviation. If you notice closely where the, where the lower strut attaches, I don't get enough light here. Actually, if you back away a little bit, let's wow, There we go. If you notice where that lower strut attaches here to the tail post of the fuselage, uh, the plans call for it to be around this area here, right where the tail spring bolts on. Uh, that's fine, that, that's very strong, but the only downside of that is that it's not completely square with the other strut. So if you look at this strut, if we were to back up a little bit, right the way Chris has done it is the upper strut and the lower strut are completely square and it just looks a little nicer. Um, so that's just a small deviation. If you're gonna make deviations in the plans, uh, you know, you're certainly welcome to do so. Just make sure you, you know what you're doing and you're not doing anything that's gonna modify the strength, at least not negatively. And something like that is not a big deal. So, um, but yeah, you can get a good view of the, of the tail here. Um, you know, the Zing is nice being an ultralight that it still has such smooth lines here. Uh, we have a leading edge D cell, just like you would find on a wing, just very, very miniature. So, let's see, I'm just showing here the uh, rear control connection. You can see here where the push pull tube goes through. Hey, Chris, could you uh, move that control stick just back and forth, side to side, so they can see here? So, you can see there. And then, if you move the control stick forward and aft. I guess you can't really see much in the video, but that, that push-pull tube is moving. And uh, uh, yeah, you get a good idea. Let's kind of, let's we got some light here. Zoom in there and get some better shots. See how this is made. So I believe both wings are done. Except for the tip. Oh yeah, we got the end plate here. So these are both the ends of the wings. I don't want to tilt the camera yet. But you can see how these wings, again we have a phenolic bearing here. And uh, you can see how this, yeah, maybe we can That's see with the video, light. That's video, so we can go like this, right? Oh yeah, yeah. We can move this around. You yeah, can yeah, see so that. I'll back up here. You can see. see that? It moves very smoothly. Yeah. No scraping. So again, here we got the phenolic bearing, and then we have a torque tube that and runs this, through. This is the way it calls out for the plan. Some people have done it different. This, the way these brackets are set up, that's the way it's supposed to be. Zoom the only thing there. they say is, is you can glue everything with epoxy too, which, you know, if you want. I don't think that's really a big deal. 
Because if you ever have to take it apart. Wing strut attachments. And then you can see here we have the inboard ribs, the torque tube. This hasn't been drilled yet, doesn't need to be just yet. So these are still, uh, oh, let's see the end here. You can see here, so this is how that works. So, quite a nice design, and it really is, uh, you know, my opinion, a little superior to to just the typical this is cable a attachment. Play, I, I hate to say it, but I think this is a, you know, the Minimax is good, but this is good too. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, well, it's taking a lot of qualities. You know, the, yeah. this this wing is very it's very similar to the to the Minimax. Very similar to Minimax and Legal Eagle type yeah. wings, rag wing wings. Yeah. Um, Mini, Mini, Minimax has one less compression. Uh, yeah, you know, for the for the ultralight legal version. Oh, gotcha. You got you got three versus this has four. Oh, gotcha. Oh, the diagonals. Yeah. Diagonals. Yeah, I see. So yeah, very similar construction. So you have a tried and true design. Um, that's why you know, as, as most of you know, you know this this wing, the Zing design has never been stress tested, but there really is no need because it's we're not going out on a limb with a new wing design. This is a tried and true wing design. It's already been stress tested. We're trust and fly with gusset. Yeah. yeah, so it's already been stress tested by uh, Minimax and... Uh, and and Ragwing. And, a whole and Legal Legal and Ragwing, yeah. yeah. So we're not going anything different. So the only thing different really is you're gonna see is the aileron system. But even then, you know, it's it's unique maybe to this wing, but not unique to, to aircraft home building. So um, great way to, to do this. Um, so, Probably, hopefully, the next video we do, we'll have a little bit more lighting and, uh, and we'll have the wings on it. Yeah, have the wings on it, right? So here we we're go. Gonna put the, we're going to put the wings on it and get that done. So the airplane is, is coming along great. Our, our plan is to uh, make it to um, Oshkosh 2016. Uh, we'll see if we can make it out there. And uh, yeah, so the remaining work is to mount put, the wings and make the struts. Make the wing struts. Center section. We're going to increase yeah, the uh, this is one. We're, this is a definite modification. The plans. Well, we're going to be making a change. The plans right now show that this height from here, from the top of this, well, basically the top of the lawn drum, but really it's the top of the whole center area, up to the center section bolt is 25 inches, and that's exactly what Chris did. We could we could measure it right now, but that really is too low. <laughs> I'm not a tall guy. Um, I am 5'10", maybe. Yeah, I'm 5'10", and uh, my head literally touches this, yeah. and that's just with no seat cushion, with no helmet, so uh, that's too low. So we're going to we're gonna put something in the plans that this needs to be bumped up at least another three inches to uh, make room. So uh, look for that, ad that addition in the plans. And, uh, yeah, so it is uh, right now we are January 16th. So we've still got several months before Oshkosh, and I uh, hope to have it there and show off the plane. So the last time, uh, you know, the original designer, Scott, Scott Land, who designed the Cloudster and designed the Zing and the Pinocchio, um, he had a Zing, I think, at Oshkosh, I think it was maybe 99 was the last time it's been there. So.